Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to the Let Us Reason uh, video series. Uh, as uh, you've been uh, tracking with us, uh, we have started a brand new uh, apologetic videos, and uh, we called it um, Tawheed Dilemma, and that was for a reason. We wanted to basically uh, show uh, that uh, the doctrine of Tawheed, as taught by our Muslim friends, is not exactly the same as taught, for instance, by the Quran. That's assuming uh, there is something called Tawheed in the Quran to begin with. Uh, to date, myself and Sam Shimon have been going through a number of passages from the Quran, and we were able to prove, without a doubt, that the Quran acknowledges that Allah may be one in essence, maybe, okay, but he is multiple persons, mm. You know, and that's what we were going to continue with. Last time, uh, yep. Sam, uh, we've been talking about the <coughs> sinlessness of Christ. And that's yes. where we ended up, and we uh, wanted to begin with chapter 19, verse 19. Yeah, let's let's continue to elaborate by the grace and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ, as the Holy Spirit enables us to do so. Remember, we focused on 1919, where the Spirit, who appeared to Mary as a perfect-looking man, explains to her who he is. He says, I am but a messenger come from thy Lord to give thee a boy most pure, and there we have the Arabic in transliteration. You know the Arabic better than anyone. Ghulamin Zakian. Zakian. Is that not the word that denotes purity? That's right. Purity. That's where we get the word zakah. You purify yourself by pain, basically. So, so this refers to Jesus being someone who is pure from conception all throughout his entire earthly ministry. So like his blessed mother... In chapter 3, verse 42, where we're told that Allah purified her, meaning that when she was created, and this is according to the Muslim expositors. The Muslim expositors teach that when Mary was created, conceived in the, the womb of her mother, Allah made sure that she was conceived in a state of absolute purity, and she maintained that purity, absolute sinlessness, pure from all defects <clears throat> throughout her entire earthly life. Same thing with her son. Now, there is a narration attributed to Muhammad in which Muhammad basically admits the sins of all the prophets, his own sins with the sole exception. If we can look at that narration. Now, it's a lengthy one. We're gonna, I'm going to give the gist of it because I want to just look at the relevant part in which Jesus is mentioned. Now, in this narration, it comes from Sahih bukhari Volume 6, Book 60, Number 3. <clears throat> On the day of judgment, the Muslims are afraid to approach Allah because he's very angry. So they're going to look for a, uh, a shafi, an, an intercessor, intercessor yeah. to, give, to give them you know, <clears throat> a connection. We hope that Allah will be merciful. So it says they went to Adam. Adam says, well, I'm not fit for it because of the sin I committed because he ate of the forbidden tree. So then he says to, says to them, go to Noah. Noah goes uh, and tells them, well, I'm not fit for it because I sin by praying for my rebellious son, that Allah would save him. So go to Abraham. Abraham says, well, I lied three times, so I'm not fit for the test. Now notice each prophet is disqualifying himself That's right. from that role because of some sin, right? And, and I'm, I'm really confused, Sam, because I thought Muslims say that the prophets are sinless. But friend, these are minor sins, don't oh, you Oh, yeah, I know. Okay. But they're so minor that it disqualifies them from the right of intercession. So very minor, right? <laughs> They're that minor, right? So minor, you can't intercede. That's right. So what does Ibrahim say? He says, well, I lied three times. Go to Musa, Moses, right. with whom Allah spoke and gave him the Torah. And then Moses says, well, I killed the man. I'm not fit for it. So now let's look at that narration. We'll pick it up and from there. And now we're going to show the people the section about Jesus. So now notice what Moses is going to say who to go to. Go to Jesus. We got it boldened. Allah's slave, his apostle, and Allah's word, and a spirit coming from him. Wow. I mean, Moses confirming what the Quran taught already. That's right. So go to uh, um, Jesus. He is the servant of Allah. And we, we agree that in the Bible, Jesus took the status, the position of a servant, became the servant of God the Father. His apostle, Hebrews 3.1, the apostle of God the Father. Allah's word said of no one else but him, and a spirit coming from him said of no one but him. So now notice here, Jesus is identified as the word and spirit of Allah, from Allah. But now watch this. Jesus will say, I am not fit for this undertaking. Go to Muhammad, the slave of Allah, whose past and future, future sins will, were forgiven by Allah. Now notice, other forms of the narration say that Jesus didn't mention any sins. Did you catch it? Of all the prophets, they're all disqualified because of some sin. Here, Jesus mentions no sin because he's sinless, but he's still not qualified to intercede. But notice what is said of Muhammad. He supposes he's going to defer them to Muhammad, 
whose past and future sins were forgiven by Allah. So in this list, it's an amazing everyone thing. sins, especially Muhammad, with the exception of Jesus. That's, uh, it's an amazing thing. By the way, I'm starting to think Moses might be another person, you know, of Allah, because he's the one who instituted the five prayers, you know? Yeah, And exactly. now he's the one who prophesies the 4171 in you, the Quran. You got, yeah, you're right. In fact, Mo Moses was more merciful than Allah and that Allah wanted 50 prayers and Moses actually convince Muhammad, man, 50 is too much. My community could only pray three times. Yeah. So again, he was more merciful than the most merciful. So more on that to come. <laughs> yeah, in, in our series of Tawheed Dilemma. <laughs> but I want everyone to catch it. Jesus is the only one who mentions no sins. So you think he alone is qualified, but again, Muhammad has to make himself more than he is. So even though Muhammad is a sinner who needs forgiveness, he's the one who's gonna intercede. But catch it, Jesus is sinless. All the prophets have sins that they're afraid to confront Allah with because they're afraid that their sins will disqualify them from interceding before the people. Now, I want you to read that citation that comes from Tabari about all the children of Adam have sins with the exception of who? If we can put it on the screen, you'll see. Very good, and I just wanna say that this is a basically a tradition by Qatada, and, yes. and that's what we're gonna show people right now on the screen, you're gonna see Qatada uh, was reported by Al-Tabari. And who's Tabari, so they know? Uh, Tabari is one of the most renowned uh, Islamic scholars of tafsir uh, commentaries. So and no he Joe wrote Shmo. also history, he's a historian. Tariq al-Tabari, but yeah. so he's no Joe Shmo, he is That's one right. of the greatest scholars right. of the Quran. Notice what he says, guys, I want everyone to pay attention. Jesus and his mother, citing Katada, did not commit any of the sins which the rest of the children of Adam commit. Now, can I that includes you? Muhammad. That's what I was gonna say. Is Muhammad a son of Adam? Absolutely. So all the sons of Adam, Muhammad especially, committed sins. How dare Qatada say that? But two exceptions again. But are you noticing it's not just Jesus, it's Jesus and his blessed mother. That's right. The blessed mother of our Lord and her son, they're sinless. Now here's the problem. Let me clarify, the <laughs> Bible never talks about the sinlessness of Mary. But Muhammad did. Exactly. The Quran does, Islamic tradition does, right? That's right. So now, Jesus and Mary are absolutely pure and sinless. The only two descendants of Adam. Muhammad, everyone was a sinner. Now, even the prophet sinned, but Muhammad is not a true prophet. He's a false prophet. But with that said, can you do me a favor and read for us? We're not going to have it on the screen, but go to chapter 16, for 61 of the Quran. Again, I want to make sure we get this point. Jesus and his beloved mother, sinless. The only ones who are sinless. All the human descendants of Adam, Adam himself, sinned. That's right. Read 16 verse 61 for us. 1661 says the following, if Allah were to take mankind to task for their wrongdoing, for their sin basically, yes. he wouldn't leave Hiran a living creature, Not a just living humans. being, correct? Living creature, right? But he reprieved them to an appointment term, and when their term comes, they cannot put it off an hour, nor yet advance it. Now let me let me bring out the implication of this. If Allah were to punish people for their wrongdoing, he'd wipe out every creature. But Allah in his patience tolerates the sins of his creatures until the appointed day. So this passage is clear. Is there any creature who isn't a wrongdoer in the sight of Allah? No, it says all. I mean, <clears> and if Allah wanted to yeah. then punish creation for its sins, would he leave any creature alive? No, he says, uh, not, a, not a living being, basically. So all creatures, right? Correct. And this is repeated in 3545. But wait, Al-Fadi, you just confused me. The Quran, the sound narrations attributed to Muhammad, Katada, <clears throat> all affirm Jesus and his blessed mother, absolutely pure, sinless, from conception throughout their entire earthly life, never committed any of the sins that the rest of the children of Adam did. Now, I'm really baffled. If Allah were to wipe out all creation for their wrongdoing, he'd be just because every creature has done wrong and deserving of punishment. But uh, Jesus and Mary are absolutely sinless. That's right, and that confirms biblical teaching that we're all sinners. Yes. All have but sinned. But wait, Mary is not a sinner. Yeah. Jesus is not a sinner. Now, if I apply Quranic logic, that means Jesus and Mary cannot be mere creatures. They have to be divine beings that became human. That's right, special above. Okay, but hold on. How can Mary, now I understand Jesus, Jesus is God, that's what we're trying to prove. He's the eternal word, the eternal son, co-equal with the Father in essence, glory, nature, honor. He became flesh, so he is more than a creature, he's God in the flesh. But here it says, Mary is also sinless, pure, free of all sin. 
Therefore, according to 1661 of the Quran and 3545 of the Quran, Mary is no mere creature. She too must be divine, either a goddess that became flesh, or she's the other member of the Islamic Godhead, which means that Muhammad ended up doing what he accused others of doing, because in 5116, Muhammad puts in the word, in the, in the mouth of Jesus, a conversation between him and Allah, where Allah asked Jesus, Oh Jesus, did you tell mankind to take you and your mother as two gods besides Allah? Well, in reality, it is Muhammad who has turned Jesus and his mother into Answer. two gods besides Allah, making Allah the third of three, or made Mary one of the members of the Islamic Godhead. And it's an interesting thing, by the way, that verse in the Quran, chapter 5, actually focuses, 5, 160, 160, 117, focuses on these two members, yeah. Jesus and his mother. There you go. Why? Why the two? Hey, by the way, I'm, I, I keep counting so far. It's quadrinity. <laughs> yes, right. You know? It's Allah, Spirit, <laughs> Jesus, and now Mary. Uh, we're going to get into pentinity Ooh, and uh, go into octinity. And, yeah. Okay, very good. You know, so, so far four, right? And, and they have Even a problem Mary. with our trinity? Yeah, exactly. What else, brother, you want to talk about? Well, uh, I think we're going to have to defer it for the next... Uh, Absolutely, yeah, so and uh, that's why I want to give a teaser, yes. uh, basically. Uh, for we're going to talk about Jesus' exaltation to the status of Allah, showing again that he's no mere creature. He must be divine, equal to Allah. Amen. Amen. Well, you've heard it from the master here, uh, the Sam I am, and uh, therefore uh, we would like for you to continue to join us. Please use these passages, use these videos as a tool, reach out to your Muslim friends with these kind of pointed questions, challenging questions. Of course, we want to always share the truth in love. Needless to remind you of that. Thank you for joining us. God bless you. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Also, hit the bell so that you don't miss future videos. And please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash Sira International. And together, we can introduce Muslims to the gospel of Jesus Christ.